Morning, everyone. How's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Chronicles of Aguna. A really, really sad episode, an episode that I hoped I was never going to have to make. Um, we are going to pay tribute to someone that I'm fortunate enough to have called a friend um, in Kevin Campbell, who sadly passed away. Now, I'm not the only Arsenal fan turned content creator or Arsenal fan full stop that was able to call Kevin Campbell a friend. And that is a testament to the man, to his character, to the fact that he had time for absolutely everyone. And I want to start off by sending my condolences to his family, of course, first of all, and to his really, really close friends, to anyone that knew him, because this is a guy that opened up his heart pretty much to everyone. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about Kevin, how I met him, um, the friendship that we we developed over a number of years. Uh, we'll do all of that on this uh, on this episode. I had planned a whole pod today um, where we were going to talk about um, you know news, things that have been going on, um, things that are much more positive, of course, than this. But none of that matters now. You know, the speculation, the, the transfer chat, that can wait. That's not important. Um, this is way more important and something that um, I really want to do. Difficult episode, but it's something that I really want to do. So Kevin Campbell came on the second ever episode of the Chronicles of Aguna podcast back in January 2018. But that's not where it all started. Um, so for those of you that don't know, um, once upon a time, I wrote a book, uh, called the Chronicles of Aguna. That is where the name for the podcast came and the idea from the podcast came. What I did was I wrote a kind of diary styled book, um, sort of detailing Arsenal's 17, 18 season. I think I've got a copy up here. Um, I'm not going to take it down now because I'll probably knock everything off the shelf, but, um, I had this idea to write this book and bear with me it is relevant to Kevin Campbell. I had this idea to write this book and what I wanted to do was write a, a page or a chapter for every game over the course of that season. And so there were short mini chapters and I remember being really kind of pleased with myself with the idea, spending a lot of time working on it. I obviously had a full time job at the time as well. So I spent a lot of time trying to pull this thing together. And I remember approaching a number of publishing companies and saying, look, I really want to do this. And who the hell was I? Like, nobody really gave too much of a shit about what I had to say. Nobody was going to rush to a shop to buy a book that had been written by me. Who am I? Nobody even knows me. And I remember having the door shut in my face by a couple of um of publishers that had expressed a kind of interest in the idea but when we got to the kind of pitching stage they just they just weren't having it and a lot of the feedback was look unless you can put someone's name on this that people are going to recognize we we just don't see any value in it and so I set out on a mission to try and get a couple of ex-Arsenal players, because I knew I wouldn't get current Arsenal players just because of the way the landscape works. But I set out on a mission to try and get a couple of ex-Arsenal players to um, to help me out. Now, they didn't need to be a massive part in the book. They just needed to give me interviews for the book. And that was enough. That's what uh, the publishing company um, that I decided to go with in the end were looking for. So um, I got in touch with Kevin Campbell uh, via social media. And, you know, there's a lot of of people of, of Kevin's status that if you send them a message and you're a randomer and I didn't have any sort of following at the time or a, a podcast at the time or anything like that, that would just ignore you, but not Kevin. Um, he took the time to speak to me um, about his time at Arsenal, about the current situation at that point at the club and gave me an interview that would make up a really important part of my book. When I fast forward a little bit, when I got to the point where the book was ready to go and I wanted to start a podcast to kind of help promote the book, um, I asked Kevin, would you mind if I released that interview as a podcast? 
And some of the other people that were involved in the book didn't want to do that. They said, look, this was a, a written interview. And obviously, I, I, you know, what I've told you there is, is, is fine, but I don't want it to go out as audio. And that was fair enough. You know, that's their right. But Kevin Campbell was like, if it's going to help, do it. No problem. No issue whatsoever. And throughout my time of knowing Kevin, if I ever needed anything, if I ever needed an interview, if I ever needed someone to come on to uh, a podcast that I was doing or a radio show that I was doing, he's done that for me many, many times as well. He was always the first one to say yes. And he, he's, I remember his line that he always used to say to me, if I can make it, I'm there. So just let me know. And, you know, that's a testament to, to what a man he was. Um, i got to admit, at the beginning, I found it weird. Like, I found it strange. Like, I, I couldn't make sense of it. Like, this is a guy that played for my beloved Arsenal that is well-loved by not just Arsenal fans, but by Everton fans, by Nottingham Forest fans. And I think that's a good measure of someone, right? If you go around to a load of clubs and every single one of those fan bases adores you, that says a lot. And I always found it weird that somebody of Kevin Campbell's status would give me the time of day. Because when I was changing careers, I found it really tough. I would reach out to people, um, you know, trying to get conversations with people or um, put my work in front of people for them to see it. And the amount of people, and I understand why, I'm not bitter about it, I completely understand why, would just ignore it or turn a blind eye or say, you know, what we're looking for without even looking at what I was doing, just purely because I'm I'm a nobody. So then when someone of Kevin's status um, helps you along the way in the way that he helped me and so many others as well, um, to the point where we did live events together, um, we did radio stuff together, um, whenever I'd see him at any event, but especially at games like the welcome um was just so warm i remember um not the season that's just finished the one before i remember bumping into him at uh, the emirates stadium i think it was against everton and sort of walking in and just feeling this big strong hand on on my back and i turned around and it was kevin he gave me a massive hug and he said harry he goes i'm so proud of you to see you here um, I know you've worked really, really hard for this. And look, you're you're covering the game, which is what you you kind of dreamed of doing at the beginning. And it's just amazing to see. And we went over to the to the place where you get served your food in the media area. We sat down, we were talking, and uh he was obviously working for a couple of TV companies, I think, that day, and sort of production were coming over to him and you know, there was uh some other pundits that were coming over to him, and every single person that walked past him. He introduced me to them. He said, Harry's your man. If you need anything, Harry's your man. He's worked so hard and he's come so far. I'm so incredibly proud of him. And so I feel like, although I didn't see Kevin Campbell all the time, um, that he's been one of my biggest supporters and gave me confidence a lot of the time when I didn't think that I would be able to make that career transition to keep on going and to keep on pushing. So, like, it's mad because, like, you can see someone only every now and again, but you can still regard them as a friend um, and you can still regard them as somebody that's had a big influence in your life. So um, I'm super, super proud to have known uh, Kevin Campbell, um, super proud to have worked with him, and I think you only need to scroll through social media for 10 minutes, not even that, to get a sense of how much he meant to every Arsenal fan, to every Everton fan, to every Nottingham Forest fan, to the fans of every single club that he represented, to everybody who had the pleasure of working alongside him in the media. Um, this is a really, really special person that we've lost. And... I don't really know how you can sum up the character, basically, of someone that special. Like, I don't think there are any words that would do it justice. Is he, Can you say golden? Can you say humble, honest, kind-hearted? I don't know. There's a lot of um, 
There's a lot of words you can use, but none of them, as great as they all sound, would do justice to the man because this is um, somebody really, really special, and it's really, really sad that we've lost him. And um, we knew that he was unwell in hospital, and we feared that this day was coming, but that doesn't make it easier when you hear of the news, obviously. And... I could imagine that there'll be some people who, you know, people were posting on social media and saying, um, you know, get well soon, Kev, and all the rest of it. And I never posted anything. And the reason I never posted anything, you know, and I had a few people message me actually and say, why haven't you posted anything? You know, you knew Kevin Campbell. We know you knew Kevin Campbell. Why haven't you posted anything? And the reason I never posted anything is because I wanted to respect his privacy, his family's privacy, they weren't the ones coming out and saying that he was unwell. It wasn't coming from there. It was coming from other people. And obviously that proved in the end to be accurate. And, you know, at the time of me recording this, Arsenal have just put out a post as well uh, to confirm his passing and some of his former teammates have put tributes out as well. But I just wanted to respect the privacy and didn't want to be one of those people. And I know people were doing it with the best of intentions, but because I knew Kevin Campbell, um, not as well as a lot of people, but well enough. I had loads of people asking me when they were hearing that he was unwell, what's going on, what's happening. And I'm not going to say I know I knew it all because I didn't. Um, I tried to keep updated as much as I could with sort of mutual friends that we have. Um, and would often ask if, uh, anything had changed and, and how he was doing. And when he was first in hospital, um, I WhatsApped him, see how he was. And uh, he replied and said, um, I'm on the mend, Harry. Um, I'm doing okay. Um, still working my way back to fitness is what he said. Um, but yeah, I didn't want to be that guy that was posting stuff uh, about someone's health because if they wanted it to be in the public domain, if his family wanted to say it, they would have said it. And so that's why I didn't. And that's why even when I woke up this morning and I started reading all these Twitter rumors and X rumors, I wanted to wait because I think that's the right thing to do. Now, I'm not criticizing the people that did post because it's, it's coming from the best possible place. As I say, everybody loved the guy. But that's why. Um, I haven't said anything about it throughout um, throughout this time, apart from, you know, when we mentioned on a pod a few, uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago that he wasn't doing too great and we wish him all the best. So, yeah, um, that's my tribute to my friend, um, Kevin Campbell, who has sadly passed away at the age of 54, which is absolutely no age. Um, thank you for listening. The podcast will come back um, next time uh, where we'll be talking all things Arsenal, all things football, all the latest transfer rumours, etc., etc. That's not important today. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get back to the normal schedule as and when. A big thank you to everybody who took the time to listen. And um, yeah, sad, sad day. A really sad day. Rest in peace, Kevin Campbell.